Hi, boys and girls. This is Miss Jackson, your reading and language arts teacher. This is part one, the introduction of your weekly read aloud. Today, we will be reading the U.S. Constitution by Norman Pearl from our HMH textbook. Meet the author and illustrator, Norman Pearl and Matthew Skeens. Norman Pearl has published many books for young people, often about social studies and science topics. The U.S. Constitution is part of a series of social studies books called American Symbols. His books present complex ideas in a way that is interesting and understandable. Matthew Skeens illustrated the U.S. Constitution and other books in the American Symbols series. When he is not drawing, he likes to be on the move, running or jumping. Let freedom ring. I love to see the starry flag that floats above my head. I love to see its wavering folds with stripes of white and red. From Our Flag. This quotation is a line from the poem Our Flag by an unknown author. This week, you will read about important places, documents, and symbols in our nation's history. Let's take a look at this photograph for a few minutes. What does a photograph show? That's right, it shows children waving an American flag. How do you feel when you see the American flag? Can you name some examples of places or events where you have seen the American flag? That's right, you've probably seen a flag in your classrooms or at parades or probably at your favorite football game. What do you think the American flag represents? Earlier this week in your social studies activities, you had a chance to watch a video about the US Constitution and to write about it. In this slide, I would like to show you some well-known U.S. symbols. It's a present for Jin, my pen pal in China. He's never been to America, so I'm sending him stuff that tells about our country. Good idea, Moby. We should give Jen a flag. It's an important symbol of the United States. What is a symbol, anyway? A symbol is something that stands for something else. Well, a heart is a symbol of love. And a dove is a symbol of peace. And a four-leaf clover stands for good luck. Oh, right. A horseshoe also stands for good luck. Different symbols can stand for the same thing. What are some objects that stand for the United States? The American flag is a symbol of the whole country. It has 50 stars, which stand for the 50 states. And there are 13 stripes which stand for the 13 colonies that became the first states. Each state has its own flag, too. I love looking at state flags because they're all so different. Each state also has trees, animals, and even fossils that stand for the whole state. Oh, right. I almost forgot. The bald eagle is the national bird of the United States, and it represents strength and freedom. Hmm, the Liberty Bell also represents freedom. The Liberty Bell used to hang in Independence Hall in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The bell rang to announce the Declaration of Independence in 1776. The Liberty Bell stands for freedom and independence. Yeah, 
That is a big crack. That's the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty was a gift from France in 1886 as a sign of friendship. It's on Liberty Island in the New York Harbor. Many immigrants or people who came from different countries used to reach America by boat. The Statue of Liberty welcomed them to their new home. The Statue of Liberty stands for freedom, hope, and friendship between countries. Hmm, a symbol doesn't have to be an object. It can also be a building. What are some buildings that stand for the United States? This is the Washington Monument. A monument is something that is built to honor an important event or person. The Washington Monument was built to honor George Washington. He helped the United States become a country and was the first president. He's known as the father of our country. Well, that's the Lincoln Memorial. It honors Abraham Lincoln, a president who kept the country together during the Civil War and helped to end slavery. No, that's not a memorial. That's the White House. The White House is where the president lives and works. The Capitol building is where Congress meets. And the United States Supreme Courthouse is where judges make decisions about laws. These three buildings are symbols of the United States government. Oh, right. Thanks for reminding me, Moby. What other ways do we honor the United States? The Star Spangled Banner is our national anthem. That means it's a song that stands for the whole country. Some classes face the flag to say the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is a promise to respect the United States. Hmm, what else is a symbol of the United States? Good idea. There's that saying, American as apple pie. Moby, what else did you put in there? Part 2. Vocabulary Words At this moment, we will review our critical vocabulary. Convention. A convention is a meeting of people who share the same purpose or ideas. For example, Sophia and her family went to the convention to view the exhibits and to listen to the speakers. Delegates. People who have been chosen to make decisions for a larger group are called delegates. For example, Miss Campton is one of the delegates that represent the teachers from our school. Domestic. When something is domestic, it is part of or about the country in which you live. For example, the 4th of July is a domestic holiday that celebrates the United States of America. Welfare. If someone looks out for your welfare, that person makes sure you are healthy and happy. For example, in a hospital, doctors and nurses look out for the welfare of their patients. Posterity. If you think ahead to all the people who will be alive in the future, you are thinking about posterity. For example, we have a family portrait that we keep for posterity. Students, please be sure to look out for the critical vocabulary as you read and think about the meanings of each words too. Part three, interactive read aloud. Boys and girls, please get your paper and pencil ready for your stop, think, and jot questions. The genre for the selection that we will be reading today 
for the U.S. Constitution is informational text. Informational texts give facts and examples about a topic. Informational texts often include headings and subheadings to signal what comes next. Informational texts include central ideas supported by key details and facts. Informational texts may include social studies words specific to the topic. Informational texts include visuals and text features. Informational text is nonfiction that gives facts about a topic. Purpose is to inform about a topic or central idea. It includes details about the central idea, such as facts, examples, and evidence. Includes text features, such as headings, captions, labels, lists, and bold or italic words. Includes graphic features, such as charts, maps, diagrams, timelines, sidebars, photos, and illustrations. Is organized in a text structure in a text structure such as description sequence compare and contrast cause and effect or problem and solution it includes content area words that relate to the topic students please think about the title and genre of this text which is informational text what do you know about the u.s constitution what might you learn when you read this selection. Please take a few minutes to pause this video and answer out loud. Your thinking job today is to identify text features and graphic features in the selections. Your student objective is, I can use text features to find information. The selection that you are looking at on this page is informational text. What do you know about informational texts? You may pause this video for a few minutes to answer out loud, and when you're ready, you may hit the play button. If you answered that informational texts give facts and information about a topic, you are correct. Here's my next question. What are the text features that we see on this page? Hmm, I see headings, highlighted words, and labels on the map. Here's another question for you. What are the graphic features that you see on this page? If you answered the following, you are correct, and that is a map, small icons or symbols on a map, and illustrations. And last question, why do you think the author included the map on this page? The author included the map on this page to help readers understand where each of these places is located in Washington, D.C. American places, American ideals. Americans are loyal to the idea of freedom. In fact, our country was founded on it. Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, stands for this important ideal. This map shows sites in Washington, D.C that stand for freedom. The Lincoln Memorial. Abraham Lincoln was our 16th president. Lincoln led our country through the American Civil War from 1861 to 1865. The Lincoln Memorial was finished in 1922. The memorial holds a statue of Lincoln and has his Gettysburg address inscribed on one wall. The memorial honors Lincoln and his ideals of freedom and justice. The Jefferson Memorial. Thomas Jefferson was our third president. He wrote the first draft of the Declaration of Independence. It said, the United States of America was free from Great Britain's severity or rule 
The Jefferson Memorial was finished in 1943. It holds a statue of Jefferson looking toward the White House. Beside the statue are words from the Declaration of Independence. The United States Capitol the United States Capitol was first built in 1800. Congress meets there to make laws. This civic responsibility is so important that citizens from all 50 states elect the members of Congress. Through Congress, all citizens help shape our country's future. On the Capitol dome stands the Statue of Freedom this bronze figure of a woman wears a helmet. The helmet symbolizes her role as a protector of American values. The Washington Monument. The Washington Monument was finished in 1884. It honors the first United States president, George Washington. He fought for our freedom from Great Britain. The Washington Monument is the tallest building in Washington. It always will be too. A law says no building can be taller. The White House. In 1792, workers began to build a house for the president. President John Adams was the first to live in it. Later, during the War of 1812, British troops set the house on fire. Workers fixed it and painted it white to cover the damage. After that, it was known as the White House. The White House is a symbol of democracy. Democracy means rule by the people. That's how our government works. We are free to choose our leaders by voting. Students, here's your first stop, think, and jot question. Text features. How do the headings help you find information? Again, how do the headings in the selection that we just read help you find information? Number two, graphic features. How do the symbols for each place help you understand the map? And number three, why has the author included these texts and graphic features? Students, let's preview the text and look at the first few pages of this selection to note some of the text features, the headings, and the illustrations. Students, here is your anchor chart for text features. Text features present important parts of the text in a different way. Boldface or italic type can show emphasis or indicate a title, such as this. Headings and subheadings name the topic of each section of text. Sidebars are boxed information that adds to the main text. Captions tell about a picture. Bullets or numbered lists show main points or examples. Graphic features. Graphic features are visuals such as timelines, illustrations, pictures, graphs, maps, and tables that help explain ideas in the text. In the following slides, I will show you some examples of informational text features in the selection that we will read today. On page 233, you will find headings and subheadings that identify the central idea of each section. On page 234, you will find dates showing the chronological order of events, captions that give information about illustrations, and facts that support central ideas. 
and diagrams that give visual support to important ideas. When you read informational text, your thinking about the topic can change as you read the text and learn new facts and information. Although you are only making a guess when you answer this question, question number four, you will get to answer this question again when we are done reading the selection and you have gained more knowledge about the U.S. Constitution. The U.S. Constitution by Norman Pearl, illustrated by Matthew Skeens. My name is James Madison. I was the fourth president of the United States. I also played a big part in making a set of rules for the country. These rules are known as the Constitution. Let me tell you the story. What is the U.S. Constitution? The Constitution of the United States is the plan for how the government works. It says how much power the branches or parts of the government can have. It tells them how to make laws and how to make sure all Americans follow them. The Constitution is a symbol of democracy. The Constitution is the highest law in the United States. It is more important than any city or state law. The first rules of the United States. After winning the Revolutionary War in 1783, the United States was a new country. Like any country, it needed rules. Its first set of rules was called the Articles of Confederation. These rules joined together the 13 states. It was a start, but the country needed more. The United States needed a better form of government. Hmm, I would like to stop and think about a few things that I read on page 232. Like, who is the man in the illustration? Or the drawing that we see on this page? And why is he telling the story? Ah, if I reread the first paragraph, the text tells me that this is James Madison, and he played a big part in making rules for the United States. Here's my think aloud, students. As I read, I think about the details and how they can change how I think about the selection. When I read that the Constitution is a state, sorry, is a set of rules for the country, at first I'm thinking it means rules like the kind I'm familiar with, such as traffic rules. But then I read that the Constitution is a plan for how the government works. So I'm beginning to think that the Constitution covers more than just traffic rules. Who wrote the Constitution? In May 1787, delegates from most of the 13 states met in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Their job was to write the Constitution, a new set of rules for the country's government. The meeting was called the Constitutional Convention. The 55 delegates at the convention. The 55 delegates at the meeting later became known as the framers of the Constitution. Rhode Island was the only state that did not send any delegates to the Constitutional Convention. Many different ideas. Writing the Constitution was not easy. Many people had different ideas about what it should say. Some men wanted a strong national government. Others did not. There was a lot of arguing. Finally, on September 17, 1787, the arguing stopped and the delegates signed the Constitution. Then the states had to agree to follow it. The last one did so in 1790. James Madison was a delegate from Virginia. He helped the other delegates at the Constitutional Convention work through their differences. 
Madison was both smart and fair. He is known today as the father of the Constitution. Convention. A convention is a meeting of people who share the same purpose or ideas. Delegates. People who have been chosen to make decisions for a larger group are called delegates. The parts of the Constitution. The Constitution has three main parts. The preamble, the Articles, and the Amendments. 1. Preamble. The preamble is the beginning of the Constitution. The preamble tells Americans why they need a government and a Constitution. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. The Articles allow people and government to keep all Americans safe. They say that the government can build an army and a navy to guard the country. Two. Articles. The seven articles of the Constitution explain the branches of the U.S. government. They tell what those branches can and cannot do. In the United States, the people run the government. Americans have the right to vote. When they vote, Americans choose the people who will work for them in the government. The Articles divide the U.S. government into three branches. Each branch has different powers. No one branch can become stronger than the others. This is called a balance of power. Every branch is equal. Domestic. When something is domestic, it is part of or about the country in which you live. Welfare. If someone looks out for your welfare, that person makes sure you are healthy and happy. Posterity. If you think ahead to all the people who will be alive in the future, you are thinking about posterity. Why do you think the framers of the Constitution included the preamble? I stop and I think about this. And at first, I didn't think the preamble was important to the Constitution because it doesn't contain any of the rules for the country. But then I read that the preamble tells why we need a government and a Constitution. Now, I think I understand why the framers included the preamble. They probably wanted to explain their reasons for writing the Constitution to begin with in order to form a more perfect union or new country. The executive branch. This branch is made up of the president, the vice president, and the people who help them do their jobs. It is headquartered in the White House. The judicial branch. This branch is the court system. Judges see that laws are carried out in the right way. The judicial branch is headquartered in the Supreme Court, the highest court in the United States. The legislative branch. This branch is made up of Congress, which is divided into two parts, the House of Representatives and the Senate. Congress makes the nation's laws. It is headquartered in the Capitol. Three, amendments. The amendments were not part of the original Constitution. 
they were added later. They give Americans many rights. For example, the amendments say that Americans cannot be made slaves. They can belong to any religion they want. All Americans age 18 and older can vote. Since it was signed in 1787, the Constitution has been amended or added to 27 times. The first 10 amendments are called the Bill of Rights. These are the most important rights Americans have. Stop, think, and jot question number five. Reread pages 237 to 238 to analyze the text and graphic features. Does the illustration or picture on page 237 connect to what is written in the blue box or to the main text below it? Why? Number six, in the diagram on page 238, what do the labels tell about? Why is it helpful to have these kinds of illustrations or pictures with this text? The Constitution and you. So, how does the Constitution work for you? The Constitution gives the U.S. government the power to make laws. Laws aren't just for adults. They're for kids, too. There are laws that allow kids to go to school. Others say what kinds of jobs kids can have and how many hours they can work. For more than 200 years, the Constitution has kept the U.S. government strong. I'm proud of our Constitution. Now that you know its story, I hope you are too. You can see the original Constitution at the National Archives building in Washington, D.C. The Bill of Rights and the Declaration of Independence are there too. Students, this concludes the end of our selection. Let's look at our last question. When you read informational text, your thinking about the topic can change as you read the text and learn new facts and information. Now that you have finished reading this selection, let's synthesize. Number seven, how was the U.S. Constitution written? Why was it written? How is this answer different from the answer you wrote for question number four? This was one of the questions that you saw a little bit earlier, number four, which asked, how do you think the U.S. Constitution was written? Why was it written? Students, you were asked to answer this question before you read the selection. Thank you for joining me for today's Read Aloud. Until next time.